Logarithms also allow us to quickly compare the performance of a system without getting lost in large or small numbers. A common property of interest is that of gain, where gain is amplification or increase of a given input signal. This is where we must necessarily divide system into two classes, active and passive. An active system produces output greater than input, and a passive system produces output less than input. Wait, 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 some of you might be saying. You're telling me an active system produces more output than input? This seems to be a violation of all the properties we've discussed since Basic Electronics 1. Allow me to explain. An active system's output is greater than its input. However, the excess output doesn't magically appear from nowhere, rather comes from supplementary sources. Consider an amplifier, the classic example of an active system, where some small electrical input signal is increased or amplified such that the output is greater than the input. An amplifier does this by drawing power from additional supplemental power sources that feed the amplifier, in this case a positive 15 and a negative 15 volt connection, thereby making it appear as if the output is greater than the input. A passive system, in contrast, is one in which the output is less than the input, because the input is attenuated or reduced by a certain amount. A passive system doesn't make use of external supplementary sources and they're often constructed from very basic components like resistors, inductors, and capacitors. The classic example of a passive system is an electrical filter whereby input of varying frequencies input into the system and the output selects or passes only a specific band of frequencies. As the name implies, a low-pass filter only allows certain frequencies less than a certain critical frequency, FC, to pass through and anything above this critical frequency is stopped or rejected. Similarly, a high-pass filter only allows frequencies greater than the certain critical frequency to pass through, and anything below this critical frequency is stopped or rejected. We'll examine low-pass and high-pass filters in later lectures. The larger point being this. The gain of active and passive systems is often expressed using units that make use of the logarithmic scale. The unit of gain is the bell, abbreviated using a capital B. Although in practice, Gain is customarily expressed using units of decibels, where 10 decibels equals 1 bell. The property of interest for most systems is power, whereby gaining units of bells is defined as the log of output power over input power. If, however, we wish to express gain using the customary units of decibels, gain can be calculated as 10 times the log of output power over input power. This is a satisfactory means of calculating gain. However, much easier and more practical methods exist. You'll recall that power can be calculated using a couple different methods, notably voltage times current, voltage squared divided by resistance, and current squared times resistance. Using the expression of voltage squared divided by resistance, if we assume resistance for both input and output to be the same, resistance cancels out, and we're left with gain in units of decibels equals 10 times the log of output voltage squared divided by input voltage squared. Simplifying this expression, we're left with gain in units of decibels equals 10 times the log of output voltage divided by input voltage squared. Note the double parentheses. Finally, using the previously discussed properties of logarithms, where the log of A raised to the power n will be equal to n times the log of A. This can be further simplified as 2 times 10, or 20 log of output voltage over input voltage. This is the easiest and most common formula used to calculate gain since it necessitates simple non-invasive measurement of input and output voltage. By way of some illustrated examples, I hope to demonstrate some features of gain expressed in units of decibels. Let's first calculate the gain of a couple example active systems. For occasions in which output voltage is greater than input voltage, we should expect positive gain figures. Consider an active system which takes 5 volts input and amplifies it to 12 volts a voltage increase of 2.4 times. Let's see if we can determine the gain in units of decibels. 20 times the log of 12 volts over 5 volts yields a gain of roughly positive 7.6 decibels. Consider a substantially more effective system, which takes 5 millivolts input and amplifies it to 12 volts, a voltage increase of 2,400 times. What's the gain of the second system in units of decibels? By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following result. 20 log of 12 volts over 5 millivolts yields a gain of roughly positive 67.6 decibels. 
gain in units of decibels for the second active system is still a pretty manageable number. The point being that expressing gain using logarithmic units still allows us to immediately recognize performance differences between two systems without having to resort to the use of extremely large numbers. Let's now examine the gain of passive systems. For occasions in which output voltage is less than input voltage, we should expect negative gain figures. Consider a low pass filter system, which passes electrical systems less than the critical frequency and stops or rejects frequencies above the critical frequency. Let's say this low pass filter has a critical frequency of 500 Hertz. Anything below 500 Hertz should pass through relatively unmolested and anything above 500 Hertz should be attenuated or reduced. Let's see if this is the case. Let's say at 200 Hertz, 12 volt input is reduced to 11.1 volt output. For a low pass filter, 200 Hertz is inside the pass band. Let's see if we can determine the gain in units of decibels. 20 log of 11.1 1 over 12 yields a gain of roughly negative 0.7 decibels, meaning it is reduced, but not by much. Note this passive system as a gain with a negative sign since output voltage is slightly less than input, however, not by much. The low magnitude gain figure in units of decibels quickly tells us the output really isn't affected all that much inside the pass band. Let's examine this filter's performance at frequencies higher than the critical frequency. Let's say at 1500 Hertz or 1.5 kilohertz, 12 volt input is reduced to 3.8 volt output. What is the gain of this system at 1.5 kilohertz? By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. 20 log of 3.8 over 12 volts yields the gain of roughly negative 10 decibels. Note that the second operating point, this passive filter still exhibits a negative gain since output voltage is less than input. However, the larger magnitude of the gain figure quickly tells us the output is significantly reduced. That's the point. It's a low pass filter and anything above the critical frequency is supposed to be attenuated, reduced, or otherwise exhibit extremely low gain. There are a couple important points to make about gain expressed in units of decibels. As you gain more familiarity with decibels, use these observations as general guidelines. As we demonstrated, active systems can exhibit occasions in which output voltage is greater than input voltage. For these scenarios, we should expect positive gain in units of decibels. Passive systems, in contrast, exhibit occasions in which output voltage is less than input. For these scenarios, we should expect negative gain in units of decibels. Regions inside the passband of passive filters still exhibit negative gain. However, the absolute magnitude should be relatively small, meaning the output is relatively unaffected. In contrast, regions outside the passband of passive filters still exhibit negative gain. However, the absolute magnitude should be relatively large. That's the point of filters. They're filtering or removing something unwanted. In this case, an electrical signal above or below a certain critical frequency. Now for a couple special case scenarios, primarily related to passive systems. Consider an occasion in which output voltage equals input voltage. 12 volts in results in 12 volts out. The gain in this scenario is zero decibels. It makes sense because we're not amplifying or reducing anything. A gain of negative three decibels implies a condition of half maximum power. Oftentimes the half power point is used to determine the critical frequency of a filter. Anything inside the passband gets half power or more. Anything outside the passband gets half power or less. As we'll learn in the upcoming filters lecture, at conditions of half power, output voltage magnitude will be equal to the input voltage magnitude divided by square root two, or roughly 70.7%. Finally, a generally accepted standard for most applications assumes that when output voltage is one-tenth of input voltage, a scenario that implies one one-hundredth of maximum power, output is so effectively reduced it can be ignored. When output voltage equals one-tenth of input voltage, this represents a gain of approximately negative 20 decibels. Let's do a practical example of the last couple observations. Consider a filter operating at the critical frequency, such that 12 volt input is reduced to 8.5 volts output. 20 log of 8.5 over 12 yields a gain of roughly negative three decibels. It makes sense. We're at the critical frequency and we should be experiencing half power. The observant among you will note that 8.5 volts roughly equals the input voltage of 12 over square root two, or roughly 70.7%. We'll examine this feature in later lectures on passive filters. Consider a filter operating the stop or reject band where 12 volts input is reduced to 1.2 volts 
or one tenth of input. 20 log of 1.2 over 12 yields a gain of negative 20 decibels. This means we can kind of ignore this input. It makes sense. When output voltage is only 10% of input voltage, power would only be 1% of maximum, so we're not concerned about it. All right, that's about it for today. Yes, I have left a lot unsaid about logarithms and gain expressed in units of decibels, but this is all you need to know for now. We'll make use of logarithms and gain in later lectures on passive filters. In conclusion, this lecture introduced logarithms and gain expressed using units of decibels. We learned the basic structure of the common logarithm, how to calculate common logs using the scientific calculator, advantages of logarithms, properties of logarithms, plotting using semi-log charts, and calculation of gain in units of decibels. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.